you calling from, may I ask? Well, I am in the north of England, near Manchester. Oh, I see you right. That's great. Oh, well, you're getting up near Scotland where I was born. Yes, I'm halfway there, my dear. <laughs> That's right. My 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 mother-in-law is 102 and lives in in Cheshire. Wow, 102. Oh, Cheshire. Cheshire's not far from me. Yeah. That's you... what I thought. Then how's your mother doing at 102? She's hanging in there. <laughs> Yay. Wow, that's a good age, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Did she get a card from the Queen? She did indeed, and it's still on the mantelpiece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello there, rubes, ruffians, and rapscallions. We've got another episode of Kubrick's Universe for you, dedicated to an appreciation of Stan Lee's hauntingly gorgeous oil painting of a film, Barry Lyndon. It is always a pleasure to speak with anyone whose name has appeared on any one of the fabulous posters for a Stanley Kubrick film. And the poster that our next guest's name appears on is particularly a classic piece of artwork, which perfectly illustrates the classic tale of Barry Lyndon. She was born in Scotland, plays the piano, and her first role was a prostitute at drama school. She has been acting on television and in the movies since the 60s, and when recently asked what her ideal job would be, she said, quote, I think either playing Robert Redford's wife in a film or Johnny Depp's mother, end quote. Now, of course, Barry Lyndon was released in 1975, and we are now actually celebrating its 45th anniversary. We have recently spoken with Leon Vitali about his breakthrough role as Lord Bullingdon, as well as the amazing David Morley, who played Bullingdon's young half-brother. But now we get to speak with Barry Lyndon's first love, Gay Hamilton. Gay played the young Irish flirtatious and fickle cousin of the young Redmond Barry, who would eventually become Barry Lyndon. The film was, of course, shot in Ireland and England, and Gay shot all of her scenes in Ireland, which was during the initial part of the film's schedule. In this episode, you'll hear Gay chat with us about how a young Scottish girl got the role through, in no small part, nailing a perfect Irish accent, meeting with Stanley Kubrick for the first time, then working with him on this seminal piece of art, as well as acting alongside Ryan O'Neill. You'll also hear Gay regale us with stories of shooting the iconic dance scene with Leonard Rossiter, adapting to the fine art of acting in Oscar award-winning costume designer Milena Cananero's dresses, and Gay's love for the game of Frisbee. But you'll also be delighted to hear Gay tell us about Stanley the Practical Joker, as well as reads from her own personal diary, which she kept on set during the filming of Barry Lyndon, and ultimately catching up with what it meant for her to be part of Kubrick's legacy. So hang out with us for a bit as we leapfrog back through time, from the present to the mid-1970s to the 1700s, in Kubrick's universe. And you, a boy who ought to be attached to your uncle as to your father. And so I am. And this is the return you make for his kindness. Didn't he harbor you in his house when your father died? 
Hasn't he given you and your mother rent free? Your fine house of Barryville yonder? Mark this, and come what will of it. I will fight the man who pretends the hand of Nora Brady. I'll follow him if it's into the church and fight him there. I'll have his blood or he'll have mine. Faith and I believe you. I never saw a lad more game in my life. Give me a kiss, my dear boy. So, everyone, guess what? We've had the pleasure of finding Ms. Gay Hamilton. Welcome to Kubrick's Universe, Gay. Thank you very much. It's a delight to be with you. Thank you for being with us. It's really, really an honor. So I want to begin by asking you, how did you get the role of Nora Brady? Well, we had to, in in those very old days, we had to go and uh, do do the lines in front of a camera, and then they posted that, you know, in a filmic way. And the fact is, because I I was actually born in Scotland, (laughs) but at that time I lived in West Hampstead, which bordered on Kilburn. And in those days, it was called County Kilburn because there were so many Irish Irish people there. So I was able to do a good enough Irish accent <laughs> to, to keep Stanley Kubrick happy. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's how, that's how I got it. And I assume the, uh, the, the, the audition tape, for lack of a better term, was sent to him, and at some point you heard back that uh, you were chosen? Yes, indeed. I had an agent at the time. Um, yes, gosh, it's so long ago, I forgot my, <laughs> I forgot my name. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Well, anyway, and um, yes, they were delighted, of course. And um, and indeed, I had. I we we I filmed it in Ireland. In yes, in the south of Ireland. So we can imagine that your agent must have been. Uh, very aware of who Stanley Kubrick was, um, yeah, but much so. But were you were you aware of Stanley Kubrick when you first heard about the role? I, I of course I was. I was. My agent was Curtis Brown then, which uh, was a, a big agent in town, and um, I I'd certainly heard of Kubrick, but one might not have seen too many of his films in those days. Hmm. Do you recall which films prior to uh, working with him of his that you'd seen? Um, if you remind me of a few, I might have oh, seen. Oh, uh, Doctor Strangelove, perhaps, or Lolita. Yeah, probably, probably, and and could well have been, yeah. And yeah. of course, two thousand one, A Space Odyssey. Oh yes, gosh, did that really come before? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, oh, yes, I've, oh, I've seen them all. So, Gay, uh, we'd love for you to read uh, these entries, and it's so kind of you to do. Um, this first one of yours from your diary on the set, uh, I believe, is dated Friday, the fifth of October, nineteen seventy-three. You know, I had, I had been like call for fittings but that with Ken Adam. But Thursday the 4th was call at 7.15 a.m. to go to location. Dressed up, met Stanley Kubrick, given the once over. Hmm. Okay, nothing for the rest of day. That was Thursday the 4th of October. That's, okay, that's great. And on to the following day, Friday, Friday the 5th, Friday the 5th, is up at 6 a.m. I, I'm not sure about the fighting of the generator in sleep, but there may, <laughs> there may have been this, uh, something in, in the room that was making a noise, or it may have been a nightmare. <laughs> I've got a question mark after it and an exclamation mark, so something something not very good. And I have to say, I'm a little bit of an insomniac, so it's possibly something to do with that. <laughs> Uncomfortable day in stays, that in brackets I write because they call them stays, but mm-hmm. we call them corsets, mm-hmm. and rain. That was Friday, and I'm carrying on with Friday. It, can I carry on? Please, of course. Summoned, summoned to Ryan's caravan, 
with her scene. Lined up, shot in rain, and then didn't shoot, exclamation mark, because that often happened. <laughs> Taken to care, I think it was called Care Castle, Cahir, C-A-H-I-R, Castle, rehearsed. Home, dinner, champagne, hmm. for John Heller. So John Heller must have um, been celebrating. I know, do you know something I can't remember? Who he is? Do you know? Do you know a name called John Heller? I must confess, I do not. No, neither do I. <laughs> so <on the> <laughs> All right, so Saturday I'm off the hook. The six. Hmm? Yes. I said, I'm off Saturday the hook. Saturday the six. Lovely sleep up latish. Dance rehearsal. Stand by in Ardri. Circular walk three hours with Patricia. So uh, just hanging around, actually. Mm. And, and obviously, I went for a, for a walk for three hours in, in the good old days. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and the next day is Sunday. It's a rest day. And I go for a long walk with Alex Farrell. Now, he rings a bell. I think he was something in the, in the, in the thing. Do we know that name? I, I could look it up for you, but at least I, not right at this. I believe that is familiar. Um, yeah, it's familiar to me as well. Well, um, we, yeah, what, we I'm sorry. What what we'd like to do is um, put some questions to you in between, and we can keep kind of bouncing back to the diary entries. Sure. It'll be very organic, but uh, if I may, uh, I want to just ask... Uh, so can you tell us about your first meeting with Stanley Kubrick? Do you know, he, he, um, he, it was a very, he, t- he always took you aside to, um, give you a notes on anything. And, um, and he, he'd go do so-and-so and so-and-so and try not to do this and try not to do that. You know, it was all, it was all done in a very, Calm way. Nothing was done. Um, move over there. That they do in other in other things that I've done. No, he took you aside and very quietly. Say, was completely. You know, he was. Scru- uh, in, what's the word? Inscrutable. He he had mm. to have exactly what he wanted. Mm, yes. I'm using the wrong word. <laughs> no, inscrutable is but, a good, applicable word. I yeah. would say. May I just tell you at this stage, because it's quite funny, because I was born in Scotland, but because I lived in in Kilburn, that's how I managed to get a, get a, an Irish accent, because <laughs> it was called <laughs> County Kilburn at the time. Right. And so there were so many Irish around that I got away with doing an accent when I wasn't Irish. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, there we go. So where are we now? Well, I was going to ask you um, about working with the costume designer Milena Cananero. Can you tell us about... She was very sweet. She was very sweet. She was... um, Probably I had something to say to her because my first film ever was um, filmed in Italy it was called The Last Night of Christmas with Filippo Ottoni directed it. Mm-hmm. So I could follow Piccolo Italiano. Mm-hmm. So I got on very well with her because she was Italian, you know, and I had very recently been there. What What do you recall of uh, those early fittings that happened in Ireland just prior to your scenes being shot and the costumes themselves? Well, uh, the costumes were i think one of my one of my entries says it was so tight there was you know there were stays of the old fast kind and they laced them in to you could hardly breathe but mm. <laughs> it was pretty pretty hard on that mm. well i mean on monday the 8th it said when i had the the, the, the dress on Filmed the dance and nearly died on the job. <laughs> yes, we've seen that entry. <laughs> he probably he probably made us do it so many times, mm. you know. Mm. But there you go. <laughs> well, uh, we have to ask, of course, about uh, your working with Ryan uh, O'Neill, who was a world famous actor at that time. And were you aware of his work prior to meeting him? 
I was indeed. But we got in, we got on extremely well, actually. In fact, he used to invite me to come to, you know, in the hotel, and he had two chums, and I actually can't remember but their name, unfortunately. But um, he, he used to invite me to go and have champagne with him. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, he was, he, I got on very well with him indeed, actually. Once um, he, 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 the two friends said goodnight, and, and, I, <laughs> and he was already sort of near his full post of bed because they were very luxurious rooms. <laughs> and um, I said, yes, good night, right. good night. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 don't go, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> and I stayed with him. I, she sat next to him in the bed, and it was almost like reading a bedtime story, and I thought, get out of here, gay. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> so funny. I remember leaving and going, phew. I escaped. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he wasn't a very, very nice guy. He was a very nice guy. But I was a young person, you know. <laughs> yes. So it sounds like, uh, you know, a bit of the uh, rascal that was Barry Lyndon was playing itself out uh, during right, his, so. his getting into the character. Um, do you recall the, the first time you two met? It was all very nice. It was quite formal in those days, you know. And um, we, although, although we did go for little wanders, uh, you know, in the beautiful countryside, because it was very, very nice. So I got on very well with him. But my actual initial meeting, um, I was a little in awe of him, mm. you know, being very young, and he'd done quite a lot of stuff. But um, we got on extremely well. Um, and I've got something here, Summon to Ryan's Caravan, rehearse scene, there you are. But that would be look, looked upon by, <laughs> overlooked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Um, well, of course, we have to get to the first scene in the film where we see your character, Nora Brady, and yeah. she is playing cards with Redmond Barry. First love. What a change it makes in a lad. What a magnificent secret it is that he carries about with him. The tender passion gushes instinctively out of a man's heart. He loves as a bird sings or a rose blows from nature. Killarney. Now, what shall it be? Turn around and face the wall. And he was, uh, you know, again at the time, one of the most popular actors and heartthrob sex symbol movie stars in the world, uh, suffice it to say. And it is uh, quite a, a bit of a naughty scene where you are the... Naughty. Yes, a naughty scene. Uh, and you are the, this temptress of sorts trying to win Redmond's affections. Um, yes. If it's not uh, uh, inappropriate to ask, did you find Ryan to be an attractive partner to play against, as Nora did with Redmond? Absolutely. Um, but I have something funny here because when when we were in that scene, the card game scene, yes, where we were playing card games, yes, um, it made the, the the crew were howling with laughter because what happened was he because you know you had to put something down the front of my dress. Yes. And he, he <laughs> Kubrick does as Kubrick would do, he'd look through the camera and he'd go, Okay, gay, lift the left one. He's talking about my breast. Lift the left one. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. Lift the right one. Uh, okay. <laughs> the left one a little bit more and uh, just push it slightly. honestly. It was, it was hilarious. So he was <laughs> he, he was having a bit of a gag. He might have been, although he, you know, he wanted it to look exactly right for mm-hmm. what, what we were doing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny. Well, you know, I want to just pause within that scene for a moment because I've always noticed during uh, the card game, there's a moment when you turn to your right and you could be looking out the window, but there is also a statue of a, a boy or a cupidish boy if you will and sure. I, i've always had this thought i'm wondering if 
she's looking at the statue kind of regarding Redmond uh-huh. as this boy um, and, you know, what this means for her. Um, and and if you had a very young thing. Yeah. yeah. And what if you, if there's any anything to that and if you had thoughts on it? Um, do you know something? Um, I'm absolutely certain that um, it would have been Kubrick who would have said, just glance out the window because he probably that had that in mind you mm. know mm. I, I, a lot of the time you had to just exactly do as you were told sit up straight and then if yeah. he said look at it you looked at it and and of course if it was a yes yeah. <laughs> <you're right there. laughs> I was just checking it out okay the object of Barry's attention and the cause of all his early troubles was his cousin, Nora Brady by name. I have taken the ribbon from around my neck and hidden it somewhere on my person. If you find it, you can have it. You are free to look for it anywhere you will. And I will think very little of you if you do not find it. Well, it sounds like you've told us uh, about your part in that scene where uh, you hid the ribbon down your top. and uh, <laughs> Lift one, lift the right one. Lift yeah, the yeah. Laugh. It really was funny. That's, I wasn't laughing about it. <laughs> right. You were being very professional. Ha ha. Ha ha. Look properly. Your your character does instigate quite a lovely kiss with Redmond at the close of that scene, and and it's 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 a very poignant moment. It's a very beautiful one. We're just wondering what it was like uh, to perform that, and if you were forced, as it were, to do many takes. No, no, it, I I I don't think I minded. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryan was um, pretty good on that because he was so under the vigilance of Kubrick that I think he had to behave. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. I think I didn't. I did. I think he was delightful, actually. And he was going to be coming over. I think it was a couple of years ago. And I would have loved to see him again because mm. we definitely got on very well, you know. Mm. Well, that's there's another great scene uh where you're in the field uh with a group of onlookers watching that military display and oh, that's right d- d- yeah during the second part of it of course is where the ladies uh are dancing with the soldiers and um in the first part uh we're shown all the ladies are holding on to their hats it, what must have been a very windy day as you can tell from the shots <laughs> Brady Town sent a company to join the Kilwangan Regiment, of which John Quinn was the captain. And then on to the the second part of that scene, uh, during the dance sequence, of course, with Leonard Rossiter, Captain Quinn... I'm going to read your diary entry, and then if you'd like, because we have, like, an abridged version. Uh, so, so 8th of October, and uh, these, are the, these are the excerpts. Uh, I have it in front of me here. It's a film the dance, that one. Yes, filmed the dance and nearly died on the job. After, <laughs> sleep in caravan. New bit of script, rehearsed, but rain prevented shooting. Thank goodness. Well, we had to do the dance so often. You know what Kubrick was like. It just went on and on and on. Mm. But there we are. 
new bit of script uh, still had the new bit of script as well but rain prevented shooting thank goodness <laughs> yep this is true that's funny isn't it it is um but the following day uh not so funny a tummy not so good you wrote on the 9th of october day off tummy not so good stanley very happy with dance Yes, there you go. Tummy not so good. Uh-huh. Was I working on on the Wednesday? Yes. <laughs> I've seen not working. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. But I think film, oh, yes. Stanley very happy with dance. No, I do remember that, actually. Well, I, I'm quite a good dancer. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 know it's evident and, and it's um but i have to say i have to say that may dancing when you you're got tight tight corset mm. and a huge thick underskirt is <laughs> quite quite heavy going I'm certainly glad i was as young as i was then <laughs> yeah yeah um well we i mean of course all Fans of Stanley love to hear about stories of when he was happy and, um, you know, can often breathe a sigh of relief just hearing about these stories. Um, <laughs> did Stanley ever uh, tell you that he was happy dur- uh, with the uh, dance sequence or during the film? Any other moments you recall where he, as you say, pulled you aside and said something? He, yeah, he, he, we kind of read when Stanley was happy. You know, he would, he, you've got the slightest bit of a smile. He wasn't somebody who, who was ver- very ver- verbal about things. But you could you could see he was not going to do it again. And you, you thought, yep, I think that's going to be all right. <laughs> because believe me, some of the some of the times it was take nine and you, and I have to tell you at this point, it's, it is quite funny, is because he would go... This is uh, Stanley. He would go, okay, take nine. Yeah, great. Print it. Okay, let's go again. And Leonard Rossiter used to really behind me. He used to go, for God's sake. (laughs) (laughs) He was utterly furious. He used to scream behind me and say, blimey. (laughs) Isn't that hilarious? It is cool. because I mean he worked with Stanley on two thousand one a space odyssey, so one would think he would have, yeah you you would think he would have been aware of what he was getting into well, that's true, but he he probably knew that at the times that he Kubrick did these sort of things <laughs> yeah take eight, I remember that on on print said take eight right, right, let's go again well. <laughs> Well, we we should definitely ask you about the preparation for the dancing and how long it took to shoot that. But first, um, since we've brought up Leonard Rossiter, um, what are your memories of working with him? Well, I had, do you know something? I had worked with Leonard um, in television stuff, so so I knew him, Mm -hmm. you know. And he wasn't, he was probably the lead when I was in the television, and you know, and... um, he, he wasn't the easiest of people, you mm. know. Mm-hmm. He was he was very professional mm. and and definitely well thought of and did lots of things. He could get quite bad tempered and mm. say, "I don't like that. Let's do it." Yeah, mm. and complain. So <laughs> interesting and honest. Very. Well, that's true. Yeah. No. I... It says dance with Leonard so many times, exhausting. So we looked as though we'd done it many. Say so yes. Oh yes, actually, you know, do you know my my um my husband did, thought perhaps because he's watched it many times, he said perhaps Kubrick did that on purpose to to make us do it a lot of times. So that when he finally um, filmed it, it looked like it was the kind of dance we did all the time. So we do it very casually, mm. you know, not like something we just learned, which I think is probably true. Right, right. That would be how Kubrick would work. <laughs> it makes perfect sense uh, given his does, methodology. It? Yeah, it does. And you've You're circled back. Him, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said you know all about him. I have a huge Stanley Kubrick book that is so big. 
that I need to get my husband to lift it up for me to look at it. Do you know that book? The Archives? Know, is it called? It's the, the Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick the Archives. archives. Yes. The archives. Of course. <laughs> we, we have that. We have that. Yes. Yeah, bet you do. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite the coffee table book. <laughs> In fact, it takes up a whole coffee table. The legs are strong enough. Yep. If the legs are strong enough. <laughs> That's great. Good one, Gay. Good one. Yeah, to, if I may, to circle back as, as you were kind of doing – well, you were doing it organically before and I had prefaced that last question by asking about uh, the dance scene and um, – there was uh, much preparation. Do you recall how many days it, it took to please Stanley and get the final take? Oh, God, we did it many, many times. You know, I had dancing lessons um, in London, and then again I had dancing lessons in morning in, in Ardree uh, at the beginning of October when I first arrived there. So there were a lot of dancing lessons. And um, after all the takes, I guess he must have been <laughs> happy with it. But, you know. To get to the following day, the 18th of October, uh, I'd like yep. to, I want to read your entries you wrote. Called 6.30 a.m. to do external Brady. Cold still mm -hmm. hovering. Stanley mm -hmm. calls for medicaments. Seen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. Seen not working. Drive around fields. Stanley, Ryan, looking for inspiration. Most spirits not high. <laughs> there you go. So I guess we were all in the in whatever it was uh, being driven around, and I don't think Stanley found what he wanted. Mm. It would appear because nothing got done. Mm. The spirits were not high. Mm. What so, he was looking for, yes, go on. Well, you referred in that entry to external Brady. Uh, do you recall which scene this was? And uh, tell us about the medicaments uh, that Stanley procured and the scene not working. Um, I, back in those days, they wouldn't have been terribly far, terribly far forward from... Uh, what did what did one have? They they had things that you mixed in a glass, didn't they? It was probably some like aspirin or, you know, those very old things for colds. It's a cold, you see. Yes. So I don't. Well, I'm going to yeah, use the word medicaments from now on. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as they understand you at the chemist. <laughs> yes, or or the apothecary, depending where I go. <laughs> <laughs> you got no, Americans like don't have apothecaries here. I don't think most. Don't. No, I'm not sure. So, do you recall which scene was not working according to your diary entry? Well, well, I'm just seeing how near to the end it was. I don't think we done. We were doing all the external stuff here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could have been that when that when those. Parades of, of uh, soldiers were out and we were all out walking. I, I'm sorry. I didn't write enough in these books um, to give you any more information here, I'm afraid. No, it's quite it's all right. Shame. Uh, <laughs> if you drive around the fields, that means they were looking for external stuff, doesn't it? Mm hmm. Yes. Of course. I mean, it could have been the scene when you and uh, Ryan are walking along the path. Um, but oh, through, the, through the trees. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful scene. Lovely. It is lovely, isn't it? Redmond, what is the matter? Nora, were you obliged to dance five times with Captain Quinn? I don't care a fig for Captain Quinn. He dances prettily, to be sure, and is a pleasant rattle of a man. And he looks well in his regimentals, too. If he chose to ask me to dance, how could I refuse him? But you refused me. Oh, I can dance with you any day. And to dance with your own cousin looks as though you could find no other partner. And he would take forever getting that right. You know that. Mm -hmm. you, know what, you know what Stanley was like. Oh, yes. He was super careful on everything and did so many takes <laughs> well of course uh, and used entirely natural light for you know 
the whole that was film. Amazing. And Ma- it, yes, in those days, that was that was quite something, wasn't it? Well, it 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 does help create, you know, the pastiche of this film looking like a living oil painting on canvas, which so many others have pointed out that, you know, because of these extraordinary lenses he used developed for NASA by Carl Zeiss. NASA, I remember that. I remember that he was able to, yeah. I mean, just incredible. I remember him holding them up to his eye, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. Wow. NASA lenses, correct. That's yeah, it's exactly a it's a cool right. story. I believe Carl, sold, uh, Carl Zeiss created 10 of them, um, six were purchased by NASA. Uh, he yeah. kept one for himself, and Stanley Kubrick bought the other two. Or perhaps if, <laughs> I might be off by one number there, but something like that. It's like the the inventor, NASA, comma, yeah. and Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> of course, he would get them. <laughs> of course, he'd get them. That's, wow, it's amazing. Cause that, that, that's something I remember the name of them, but I didn't know it was that number. Uh, yes, it's very new. It was well, a sort of space time, wasn't it? I yeah, mean, I, I mean that ultra wide angle and the the I believe it's the aperture that's used to create the ability for the camera to receive as much natural light as possible. Um, right. I was recently rewatching the scene of you and Ryan walking along the path, as well as the the scene with the card game, and there's a a, a magnificent new um print that the criterion collection which is a fantastic company that does the most pristine restorations of uh select films and the level of detail that's finally able to be seen on a home screen uh that that stanley was able to capture with those lenses using only natural light both indoors and outdoors is just remarkable even right down to the detailing on your costume it's extraordinary, isn't it? And still in these modern days when they have all sorts of instruments and, you know, and this large screens and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Mind you, he was doing it for a film screen, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, to say the least. I'd love to ask you about your third scene. It is, of course, the long take we spoke about with you and Ryan walking through the woods and discussing Captain Quinn. And in that scene, we can really hear your strong Irish accent. But of course, you were born in Scotland. Um, mm-hmm. But it it would be fair to say that the Irish accent uh, came reasonably easy for you to do. I think it did. And I, I told you that um, because I had moved to London and was very near... Um, a place called Kilburn, mm-hmm. and it was called it was called back then County Kilburn because so many Irish people had fled over here from you know the troubles in Ireland back then. So I I, I managed to have an Irish accent. I can still do it. <laughs> I still make, that's that's why. Otherwise, I don't know. I would probably not have been able to do the accent. Mm. It's quite a it's quite a light accent. I, I haven't got a terribly strong one. I don't think. Mind you, they vary. You know, North and South Ireland are different accents. Of course. Uh huh. Of course. Um, yeah. No. Um, different um, religions as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's getting dark. Just put a light on. The sky is a lovely color. Um, Stanley, the sky is lovely color. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's so like sweet. It. That's so sweet. Um, well, you, we yeah. have another diary entry of yours uh, shortly thereafter, I think the next day, um, Friday, 19th, October, 1973. You wrote, phone call from Ryan to watch Anna Magnani smoked and oh. talked. <laughs> I'm sorry to say I don't smoke anymore. A long time ago. I good, good, that, but good. I did smoke back then. I never but he did. Anna Magnani, Magnani. Yeah. Do you remember her? No. I I I know <laughs> of her. I do I yeah. I, I have I have seen her picture and I do know a little bit, but certainly not what you could share with us. No, she's she's oh well I I, I 
you know, I just remember being in awe of her because mm. I was kind of new to the game at this point. Mm. I've got this very old guide to films that I can read about her. But no, I can't tell you too much about her. But uh, I was in awe. And I expect Ryan was in awe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He smoked and talked. Good R- God. Yes, no, the salad days. Hmm? The salad days, as they say. Well, Anna Magnani was, of course, I mean, she was, for our listeners, I'll just point out that she was a very famous Italian actress. The the 21st of October, um, your diary entry, yes, it reads, Ready early, 6 a.m., out on the Mm -hmm. goddamn y'all slope, (laughs) close-ups, long rest in afternoon. Fuck up during Leonard's close up, parentheses, aggro. Ryan had made me laugh. Which scene, was it. Which scene was this? You got to tell us. No, what happened was, of course, when someone's having a close up, you're out of, out of sight of the camera, mm-hmm. but you've got to answer, the, you know, do the other line. And um, Ryan must have done something very naughty. And I sniggered or something, and and I had to be cut, and, and <laughs> it was shocking, shocking, never would happen again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was, uh, and it was Leonard's, which you know he could get very angry. <laughs> yes, w- was that what you were referring to when you wrote in parentheses aggro? I guess so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he did not make Leonard very happy. <laughs> Ryan had made me laugh. Captain Quinn, may I have the honor of introducing my cousin, Redmond Barry? Miss Brady, it would appear you have something to discuss in private with this young man. Perhaps it would be best for me to withdraw. Captain Quinn, I have nothing to discuss with my cousin in private. Miss Brady, it would appear you have a great deal to discuss in private. Good heavens, Captain Quinn, he is but a boy and don't signify any more than my parrot or lapdog. Oh, indeed. Are you then in the habit of giving intimate articles of your clothing to your parrot or lapdog? Mayn't I give a bit of ribbon to my own cousin? You're perfectly welcome, miss. As many yards as you like. So back to... Back back to, yes, well, the next major scene uh, for Nora uh, to appear in the film is where Redmond arrives at a small indoor banquet only to discover that this, in fact, is uh, the announcement of the marriage of Captain Quinn and yeah. Nora. Yeah, I mean, a remarkable scene uh, that turns on a dime uh, emotionally and, and has some real resonance. Redmond, of course, is not at all happy and shows his displeasure by throwing his wine glass at Quinn. Yep. Do you have any uh, stories you can share about the shooting of that scene? As always, um, we uh, they had to keep changing what we ate and <laughs> for, for, for the retakes. Right. You know. Redmond, my boy, take a seat. And uh, filling the thing and mopping up the, because they would do so. I, 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 he threw the thing across the table. Yeah. Well, that probably was all a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, was it for you though? Was it nerve wracking for you to go through it? Not just that many takes, but to like as an actor, emotionally have to experience the 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 the, the feelings that Nora uh, is contending with as these two men, you know, square off. Oh God, I mean, it, it, that that's the nature of it, and certainly filming with Kubrick. Mm. Uh, you had to just do it, you know. So often I do, I went to bed absolutely exhausted, mm. and you and you go day off. Thank God, <laughs> because he made you do it so often, you know, because he wanted it perfect. Yep, <laughs> he kind of managed that. <laughs> Mrs. Brady and ladies, if you please. This is the sort of toast that's drunk a great deal too seldom in my family, and you'll please to receive it with all the honors. 
Here's to Captain and Mrs. John Quinn and Long Light. Oh. Come on, sir. Come on. Yes, <laughs> sir. Uh, Here's to a long and happy life together. A long, long and, and happy, happy life, life together. together. Here is my toast here, Captain John Quinn. Oh, wait! How dare you behave like that in my house? Mrs. Brady, take the children out. Captain Quinn, my dear fellow, are, are you all right? Oh. Name. What does all the row mean? The fact is, sir, the young monkey's fallen in love with Nora. He found herself in the captain mighty sweet in the garden today, and now he's for murdering Jack Quinn. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Brady, I've been insulted grossly in this house. I ain't at all satisfied with these hair ways of going on. I'm an Englishman, I am, and a man of property. And as for this impudent young swine, he should be horse -lipped. Mr. Quinn can have satisfaction any time he pleases by calling on Redmond Barry, Esquire of Berryville. You, you, you do mention in your diary that you spent time with Hardy Krueger, who played Potsdorf, but um, you, of course, did not share any scenes with him. So since, no. but you know, it's unfortunate. It would have been a great dynamic to have included in the film. But w what was uh, it like? Uh, for you two as friends on the set? Uh, well, I think because he, I had, I had learned German at school, and so I, I kind of was quite interested to, ich sprach ein bisschen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was quite interested and in also to hear about, you know, how, what it was, where he came from and all that. So, no, I, I got on pretty well with him. I, I just remember it being very stately. That's my memory of of him. You know, he was a very yeah slim, well to do, and yes, mm -hmm. uh, not not. I didn't have very much time, but we chatted. You know, obviously, God, there were there were plenty of time around around and uh, around um, Kubrick filming to talk <laughs> okay let's go again right right <laughs> like the like the there's the, there's a monty python's flying circus episode where they keep circling back to with start again always reminds me of kubrick start again cut take cut print print. It, but the, the joke with, with kubrick was Okay, print that. Okay, let's go again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to sit through them and choose every single thing. Yes, yes. I, you know, I, for a long time, I went down to Kubrick's place with his wife and daughters, who, of course, were in the, the appeared in the film yeah. in, in, on that field in the race thing, and um, met them for a long time. But that stopped now because I think she'll be not wanting the party there anymore mm. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go every year lovely well, tell us about uh your memories of uh you know uh, spending time with his family on the set oh they were lovely little girls mm. um the two the two daughters that uh, was two daughters just i think wasn't it the three okay. yes katharina mm. anya and vivian Katharina, she was the older one, was she? Yes. Was she the oldest? Yes. Rather, not the older, the oldest. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, I, I got on fine with them. But of course, one, one was a little in awe because they were related. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but no, they were perfectly sweet. But they were they were very young, two of them anyway, and um, so they 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 wouldn't bother with some grown up person so much. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were perfectly nice, actually. Oh, that's wonderful. Nice. That's wonderful. The mm. the diary entry you have for uh, the 30th of October, I believe, yeah. says, um, out at 12.30. Go on, you take it. With Jackie to location. Interesting. Now, Jackie, 
she must have been something on the crew or because uh, she wasn't she certainly didn't act and um but I remember she she drove us somewhere. John Binder's successful Brock. <laughs> you see, that's so long ago I hadn't forgotten what a Brock is. Moved to an to other little hunting the gas. That was weird. that was really weird actually. These people were weird. Mm. They, well, ISIS. Do you know much about ISIS? Uh, I, <laughs> e- educate us, please. Well, it, it is a, it is a group of people who who are utterly weird. I mean, I only I only know it from here. Believe me, <laughs> I have no ISIS loving friends. But um, they, it was uh, ISIS was something they worshipped. I'm going to have to look it up in the diary because I can't remember in their temple, in their own temple. So you're referring so to the goddess Isis, I believe. I must be that, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. And they did a lot of worshipping. And I think we did go up into the top of their house and it had a very weird window mm. and light. You looked at the sky and everything and ugh. We were terrified. <laughs> I can imagine so, yeah. It sounds a little creepy. People walking by coughing, so they must have been laughing at us, whatever we were doing there. The Anglo-Irish aristocratic family. Mm. Blimey. Blimey. So right. People walking by corpsing. Well, corpsing was laughing with them, but they must have been sniggering at us. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god Milena to Greg and Milena Milena was very sweet is Milena still around we don't know do we oh gosh Stephen no. is Milena Cananero is she she's still with us oh yes yeah, she is I, yes. I thought yeah, she, so she's doing fine yeah excellent <laughs> yes yes um, it is quite strange um, the, I have to say the both the Places around Comora and the Bee Mountains are very beautiful. Mm. You know, really lovely, actually. Well, I have I to. As... Oh, go yeah. on. No, go, go on. Go on. We did say, I think it was party time now. I think we'd finished <laughs> out playing frisbee. <laughs> God. Frisbee. No, frisbee. no, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. In fact, I, I'm not kidding you. I have, I keep a frisbee in the trunk of my car. In the boot, oh, as oh, in the trunk, in the oh, boot, really? as you would say, yes, no, just for That's for really. the chance that you know I can toss the frisbee with a friend in the park on a nice day. I always keep I've, on. I've in still the... got mine. It's good. I'm, I'm quite a good frisbee thrower. Oh, I would love to play frisbee with you. Then, are you kidding me? <laughs> that would be a dream come true. Now you said you're that you wow that you're good. That would be awesome. I love it. I do too. Uh, I do too. That's so cool, Gay. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. I almost hate to get yeah. back to I almost hate to get back to, 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 to basics after such an awesome revelation as that. But this this one we have to ask, okay, of course. Were there any scenes that you shot for the film that were ultimately cut by Stanley? Do you know there were so many takes that um obviously were never shown, that I don't think there was anything in the script that didn't get, sh- that didn't get actually filmed. It may have been cut a bit, mm. but because she doesn't have a huge amount in that extremely long film, <laughs> um, yes. I don't think anything was cut, actually, no, no. Hmm. I mean, in the, in the old days, filming used to be, um, they they do so many takes and they were thrown, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and you went, okay, let's go again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what happens to that other bit? <laughs> right, right. Oh, uh, wow. Well, gosh. I have to ask, oh, go on, sorry. Let's go on, you, you carry on. No, just um, wondering when you got to see the finished film for the first time and do you recall that experience? Um... Uh, we, I think we got shown it the car, privately, you know. So I think they had a screening for cast and, and crew, you know. That's that's probably the first time. 
And of course, when you finally see it and it's on a huge screen, you just uh, you're in awe. <laughs> yeah. And you think, well, maybe that was worth all that hard work because <laughs> it was it was probably the hardest the hardest amount of work I'd ever had to do in a, you know shooting a film. I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can only. Im- brilliant. Um, so, I, I want to ask if you have any recollections of reviews about the film uh, as they came out back in 1975. I don't think they were all immediately. You know, some some were complaining it was too long. Mm-hmm. That that is in my memory. And some plucked bits they liked out of it. And as time has gone on, it has become more and more and more admired. Absolutely. It's probably got something to do with larger screens, you know, and people enjoying full, beautifully shot, wide scenes, which they didn't do so much in those days. They did little close-ups and small scenes of a few people talking, which I quite like, but they're actually going back to see, <laughs> you know, when they're like, they're almost like theatre stuff you want. Yes, yes. There was a, a bit of am- amazement at it. I, I do remember that. And then they, they celebrated it and showed it in cinemas. And quite a lot of, um, a lot of uh, things was made of it, you know. Well, like all of Kubrick's films, when they're released, you know, there's a line, it seems, right down the middle where, you know, half the audience and critics say, you know, what the heck was that? I I don't understand, you know, and the other half is just going, that's a masterpiece. And ultimately, everybody that wants to participate, as it were, with a Kubrick film, which is the way I think we all kind of approach uh, our viewership and appreciation, is to acknowledge that it is upon repeated viewings that Stanley Kubrick's films really make their way into your own um, DNA as a cinephile. And that's something that's not attributable to too many other directors. And it's funny because, yeah, I mean, Barry Lyndon, it seems amongst all of them was the one that had the longest incubation period between most people, even Kubrick fans, saying, "Oh yeah, I've I've seen it," and to the the present day where it's reevaluation and appreciation, particularly on social media and the internet, uh, is yeah. is is now it's like it's amazing. Do you think it's a bit like um, classic books that yes. you first read when you're young and you read them, you go, oh, "Can't get through this," yes. and then you go, "Oh, this is good stuff." Yeah, that's a perfect <laughs> analogy. Probably- yeah, that's probably true. Oh God! But I, I, I must ask, of course, about working on the Duelists for Ridley Scott, which was essentially his uh, debut film, and he went on to become, you know, a very notable director to say the least, and he's still working to this day. There have been a lot of comparisons by, you know, some over the years to. Uh, the Duelists and Barry Lyndon in terms of style and cinematography. But my question is, um, what was your experience working on The Duelists with Ridley Scott like? Well, um, the, the the guys that were in it, uh, can you remind me who they were? <laughs> it was Caradine and Harvey Cartel. Oh, yes. Of course. <laughs> I used to call him Kiss Kiss Caradine. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss Caradine. And the other one... Was it Harvey, Harvey Cartel? Cartel. Yeah. Harvey, yes. Yes. I had a little more difficulty with Harvey Cartel, but he was he was okay. <laughs> Interesting. Anything you'd share? Absolutely not. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um... <laughs> um no, they they were fine. It's, it's such a long time time ago that I don't really. But I do I do remember him being a nice, a very nice guy. So, I'm just curious, as uh, among many Kubrick's fans who really enjoy looking at the craft of acting, and I did some when I was a much younger lad. Um, 
what is important to you as an actor when you're on set? Um, you've got to... Well, look, you see, having done theater and that, you have to learn to keep it very for the for the camera you know so you're not you're not projecting you're in the you're in the in the situation right completely in the situation right so you don't you don't flounce unless unless that's the character that does it mm. um and um I would, close ups i remember that being being something i learned to do with very little don't move your face too much. Just try and be as you would be if you were talking to someone sitting next to you. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not move it all around, and it, well, people did. I mean, you can see in some old films, can't you? But, well, um, well, working with Kubrick, you must have gotten a master class on the technical aspects of screen acting. Oh, I think so, and. You know, he was, he, he did, we, well, as I said, it's so many takes and, and he wanted less, you know, mm. just look at the thing, think, think it. Right. And if words to say, just say them, but you're thinking it. Right. And you're looking at the other, you know, when you're looking in a lens, it's not quite like looking at the other guy. <laughs> but, um, but, but less is best, I think it would be would be the um the the best way of saying it the mantra yeah oh la la yeah, yeah. ooh la la yeah. indeed i just have uh one final question if you'd be so kind of course this is a question we love to ask uh people and um there is no right answer just tell us what comes to your mind the question is simply who is stanley kubrick Um, I think I would go towards one of the greatest. That that you know, in my mind, he was. Uh, oh God, it's almost like when you think of Shakespeare in playwriting. Mm. That's what I, that's where I would put him. Mm. I can't. I can't think. I mean, there are there are there are other in other countries like Italian directors that I have got great um thing for but um i would put him right right very high up mm. most certainly deservedly Not the easiest to work with <laughs> 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 you had to learn you had to learn how to deal with it but i think in the end i did and um he he, he i think he honored that a bit you know it was it was great but wow <laughs> yeah i i can't <laughs> think no, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing so much with us and, and and just giving us your time and these wonderful stories. It's really been it's been a treat. It's a pleasure. And you know what's wonderful about about Barry Lyndon is that as, as the years have passed, it's been more and more honored. Wouldn't you agree? When it first came out people were saying, Oh, it's too long and yeah, but it it, it is honored now Whole, wholeheartedly wholeheartedly agreed it's been delightful to talk Well, we couldn't have asked to have spent a nicer time with Nora Brady, even if she had told us where she hid the ribbon. Our sincerest thanks to the ever-lovely and effervescent Gay Hamilton for sharing so much of what she did. We really hope all of Stanley Kubrick's fans enjoy hearing her catch up with her time as Nora, as well as hear how lovely she remains 
and Shall Air So. This one was a treat. Thanks for checking it out and for checking in with our podcast. Be sure to keep up with Kubrick's Universe, like and download all our episodes, and stay tuned for more. No matter what level fan you are of Stanley Kubrick, please know we consider it an honor to bring you this show, and we love doing it. Coming soon, we're going to hear more from Kier Delay in our continued conversation. Like your one chance to blow the explosive bolts, survive the vacuum of space, and make your way safely through the airlock, you don't want to miss it. Lastly, as it is now September 2020, we want to wish every one of you all strength, the best of health, and mental fortitude during these trying times. Whatever it takes, just hang in there. Things will get better. They always do, because however vast the darkness, we must supply our own light. On behalf of our tireless producer, Stephen Rigg, as well as our contributors, Mark Lentz and James Marinaccio, this is your host and humble narrator, Jason Furlong, saying thank you, signing off, and reminding you that you will always have a place and share this space in Kubrick's universe. Everything is beautiful. It's Kubrick's universe. We just live in it. We have taken very thorough precautions in this podcast against broadcasting anything which might only be attributed to human error. These guys aren't scientists. They're making it up as they go along. Thank you for listening to the Stanley Kubrick Podcast. Come back soon. It was real nice talking to you. Bye. Over and out. This show comes to you from the Stanley Kubrick Appreciation Society.